Hey, it's so nice to actually finally meet you in person or yes, you. or at least live. <laughs> you as well. So um, before we jump into things, I just like to set the stage for everybody that's watching. This is Our Stories Live and it's the um, episodes that I do every other week to speak with people that are celebrating what makes them different just by being themselves. So today I have Lauren Kennedy on and we're going to have, I think, a great conversation. I've been actually really excited about this for I don't know, whenever I sent you that email, like two months ago or something. So this is terrific. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about who you are, just a little bit, um, and then we're going to maybe just dive into some questions. Does that sound good? Sure. Okay. Yeah, sounds great. So this is what I know about you. I know that you are a mental health advocate. You're also a mental health professional and a researcher. So you have this kind of trifecta a world of mental health um but you also are the creator or founder of living well with schizophrenia youtube channel which is i think six months old now about that? that yeah yeah okay um and then also something about you is that you live with schizo um was it schizoaffective disorder is that true as well yeah yeah okay disorder. all right i just because it's a little bit of a new world for me. So that's why I, I, I'm trying to be careful about like, wait, is that the right term? And I think so, and I've done enough research. So that's, that's I wanna sprinkle a little bit about you in, in that regard. So you coming into this mental health space with some experience, personal experience, professional experience, research experience, and you're, you're on this new platform to share information. So I wanna dive into just maybe a couple of the questions that kind of find out a little bit more about the YouTube channel and the things that you're doing. So the first thing I've been wondering about is what's the purpose of um, living well with schizophrenia YouTube channel that you created? Yeah, sure. So I made it basically, it's devoted to increasing knowledge and just helping people feel a little less alone who are living with the illness and people who are supporting a loved one with the illness and for people who just want to learn more about what the disorder or the illness is like. Um, so really it's for everyone just to kind of um, provide more knowledge and education around it and to just build more empathy around the illness. Mm. You know, you share a lot of personal, I mean, it comes from a real personal space when you started it especially. So. Does that play into the empathy piece of this? Because I, 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 I backtrack to that because there's there's a lot of knowledge out there, um, but it's it's not in the same format in which you are providing it. It's because it's so personal and vulnerable. Um, so is there is there an additional purpose or this to share empathy in a new way? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's a lot of what's lacking in the current education and knowledge that's out there is the personal firsthand experience of people who are living successful lives with the illness and just getting that firsthand account of what it's like to live with the illness mm -hmm. and to manage it and whatnot. And just, yeah, again, building that empathy around it. Yeah. So because it's so personal, and this is something I'm really interested in because I don't, I don't think I've seen much uh, much information about this. I'm, I'm curious, like, how did you decide to, to be able to share this or share this information in this way? Um, my partner actually really encouraged me to do this. He really wanted, or he was really or encouraging me to start a YouTube channel about my experiences with schizoaffective disorder because he thought that it would be a really great way to reach a lot of people. And that's what it has proven to be. It's just a really great platform to reach a lot of people and to um, help connect people within that community. And it's just been, yeah, it's been a really great form of connection. I mean, I would think this would be obvious, but I'm just curious, like, okay, so your partner helped you think about doing it this way. I mean, were you nervous about starting this and sharing? I mean, you're sharing so much about yourself. Yeah, I was really, really nervous. Um, and I think it probably shows in my earlier videos. Oh, I, I'm still nervous when I make the videos, but yeah, no, when I was first starting out, it's a really vulnerable thing to do, to share that personal account of something that's yeah. really kind of taboo within society still. So to share that really personal information was really nerve wracking and it still is to this day, but I think that it's really important to do. So continuing on with it. I, I mean, I would agree. And I, I love that you do it. I mean, I discovered you through YouTube. I, 
I don't know how, but I think it was a suggested video where I was looking up something and I was just, I was enamored by how you presented the information because it was, it's nothing like I've seen before. You know, and I've seen a lot of mental health education and, and there's, um, there's, I just haven't seen it that way. So I'm so glad that you have done that. Thank you. Yeah. So, you know, I wanted to backtrack a little bit too, because um, for the folks that watch this now or watch this later may not know the difference between schizophrenia and schizophrenic, uh, I'm sorry, I've lost that. Okay. This gets no affective disorder. Could you help us understand maybe the two differences between that? Yeah, sure. So schizoaffective disorder is basically schizophrenia with a major mood disorder. So for me, it's bipolar disorder, but it could also be depression. Um, so that's really the main major difference is that it's the schizophrenia symptoms in conjunction with a major mood disorder. How, is for what most people understand or know, I mean, is, is one more um, prevalent than the other? I'm not sure about prevalence. Um, people kind of describe it as like a continuum of, mm. of the schizophrenia illness um, okay. so with like bipolar and then schizoaffective disorder and schizophrenia, but I don't, I'm not sure about the prevalence. Okay. Okay. Just, it's, I think, because when I'm watching your videos, the schizoaffective disorder was the first time I'd actually heard that phrasing. Okay. So for me, it was so new and I thought, oh, is this, is this common? Um, and yeah. so it was, it was interesting to understand more of that. I haven't heard a lot of it either. Um, I had taken an abnormal psychology class in university and so was a little bit familiar with the term schizoaffective, but hadn't heard of it otherwise. Yeah. But I'm coming to meet more and more people through like the Schizophrenia Society here locally in Edmonton. Um, and I'm meeting a lot of people who have actually the diagnosis of schizoaffective. Right. So I think within the schizophrenia umbrella, it's it's more common than people know. Oh, no. Yeah. So I think even to that, it's interesting because I think the education that you're providing or the knowledge you're providing is maybe it's um, it's a wide net of just awareness for so many different people of just broad terms. But then even getting a little bit deeper into this, it's like I can dig a little further and, and find out even so much more information. So I hadn't thought about like the information you shared could be it's in different layers, I think, is what I'm realizing. Yeah, and I mean, like a lot of people really connect with the information regardless of their mental health diagnosis. Yeah. So there's stuff that a lot of people can relate to regardless of what their diagnosis is. So that's kind of cool too. So it's been six months, like we said earlier. Yeah. I'm curious about, so you jump into this YouTube channel, you're gonna share your story, you're gonna share your experiences and all this information. Um, has anything surprised you over this last six months? Um, I'm really blown away by the amount of people that I've been able to reach within this short amount of time. I think that's been the biggest surprise. Like when I first started out, I think I got 10 views and I was so excited because I had reached 10. <laughs> yeah, and I get it. And now it's way, way bigger than that. So that's been a really big surprise. Yeah, but, I think, I think even today I look at your subscribers, I think you're like 15,000 or something like that. Something like that. Yeah. 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 Which is in incredible to think about because it's, it's not so much about the number. It's more about like the, the people you're, you're connecting with, the information yeah. that you're spreading and in such a positive way. Yeah, it's been really, really encouraging to get so many people sharing their stories with me and sharing how the channel has helped them in their own journey and whatnot. So that's been really, really encouraging and really great to see and experience. Has it surprised you at all? Or, or has it, because your partner helped you you know, start this journey. I mean, did you have some expectations as you were going into this and now six months later, it feels different or something has evolved or that, or something that has changed for you? Um, I didn't think of it as something, a tool that would help me with my own self-acceptance in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like I just kind of thought it would be a fun exercise to kind of share a bit of information about schizophrenia and schizoaffective disorder. but it's really kind of grown into um, a way to help others, which has been really nice, but it's also been kind of a way to kind of help myself mm. um, be more comfortable with my diagnosis and myself living with the diagnosis and to just kind of um, embrace or encourage a little bit more self-compassion and self-love around, mm. around my illness. Yeah. Prior to this YouTube channel, were you disclosing your diagnosis I'm going to say openly, but 
or, or was it was it like the best kept secret for you and your family or, or where were you on that spectrum of sharing um it wasn't something that i was actively hiding but i really only shared it with like my close friends and family so not a lot of people knew before yeah i i can, I can understand now like this is such a milestone and like an acceptance of the diagnosis as well because it's so public and and it's not just yours anymore i mean i look at it as like you know even if you don't use that word or not but like if you're online you become sort of this expert in this space you know because you become this big advocate for so many people do you see it that way i don't really see it that way because um i don't want people to be taking my word over their doctor's word or over sure. you know their treating mental health professional and i really don't ever want to step into that space I really just want to take the form of being an expert within my own experience and mm -hmm. an expert in sharing that with the world rather than an expert on schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder or mental illness. Sure. I mean, and that makes a lot of sense too. Yeah. I, I can see that you're maybe like the entry point to maybe somebody who's newly diagnosed or somebody who's uh, a family member who's caring for somebody or, or, you know, connected to somebody like that. Yeah, like when I was first diagnosed, I scoured the internet, including YouTube, for anything and everything I could get my hands on that would kind of help to explain what I was going through and just have someone I could relate to. And it was really hard to find that. So it's really mm -hmm. nice, I guess, to, to be that for other people and to have other people have that kind of warm welcome to the diagnosis. I mean, that's true. I mean, it's maybe a little like, it's a funny way to look at it, right? But it's really, <laughs> it is really true. Um, you know, something I've also noticed in the channel is, I think you just started this maybe two, three weeks ago, you started expanding beyond just your experience. And now you've had panel discussions. I think you just put a brand new one up today, maybe even. I did, yeah. Yeah. Can so, you t tell me more about those? Yeah, sure. So um, there are two individuals, Vicky and Peter, who I met through the Schizophrenia Society of Alberta. We all give presentations together through the, the society. And so um, I knew them fairly well and thought that they would be really, really great people to share their own experiences with it. Because again, everybody is so different in the way they experience this illness. And so I wanted to broaden the information that I was providing beyond just my own experience. So to have their experiences and viewpoints on the illness and living with it and whatnot has been just incredibly valuable. And I'm so excited to share that with everyone too. When you started this, I may keep going back to that because I just think it's really interesting because you're still kind of fresh into this like journey or an adventure of, of yeah. sharing on this platform. Um, I, I'm wondering you know, like what you want to share or, or not just the content itself, but how you want to do it. Has that started to evolve as you become more comfortable in the medium and what you're what you're doing now? Um, so you mean like expanding how I'm? Yeah, like I mean, when you set out, like for I'll use an example. When you set out to start, it was start this channel, and you're sharing your own experience. Yeah. When did you start to think like, hey, I should actually have more people on, or we should do it in a panel format, or so I'm wondering, yeah, like how how that evolution is working for you. Um, that was something that I wanted to do fairly early on because I never wanted it to be just about me and my experience and whatnot. Like, I really wanted to show a good breadth of experience and um, really get good representation in terms of people who are living yeah. well with schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder. So um, that was kind of within the picture from the get-go. And I mean, I would love to just continue expanding it to include more and more people who are living well with schizophrenia. Have you thought about a little bit more in the future, like where you'd want to take this a little further? Because I, I, I'm reminded of this video that you, you, I don't know, you put it there maybe a month or a couple months ago, but it was about sharing your story. And you had yeah. this, it was a short little video about asking people to share their stories in the comments. And I really love that because it builds more, it's, it's a two way community more than just a one voice. Um, have you thought about where that might go in the future for you? I haven't thought too extensively about that. Um, I mean, I would love to make Living Well with Schizophrenia into an organization at some point that really helps reach more people and share more stories and just yeah. connect people more within this community. So yeah, no, I'm not really sure where it's going to go, but excited to keep growing it. Yeah, that's terrific. And I, I, yeah, and I just kind of assumed you probably didn't have a zillion of these answers, but I just it's been really interesting to watch. I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're thinking about like where you could eventually take this because I think there's such value in, in the way that you're sharing it and how you're doing it. So I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. 
so this the, the show that I do here is really around just talking about how people are different and celebrating what those things are. It, and it's really trying to acknowledge that we're all so different in, in, in ways that may be obvious and ways that may not. So the thing I was so excited about with you specifically is it, you're, you're so visual about sharing this story out loud. And, and it's not one that is maybe easy to do for a lot of people. Um, so I'm wondering if you have any advice for folks that maybe they want to live their true life, they want to be a little bit more open, but they're maybe a little scared, a little afraid. Like, is there any little advice to help them kind of like be true, be more true to who they are? Yeah. Um, I was having a conversation with my therapist the other day around, um, I guess, differences and, you know, around the concept of how you see mental health and how you relate to your own illness. And he kind of phrased it as being um, not so much to look at it as an illness, but to look at it as a, a form of diversity. Mm -hmm. And so the way I experience the world is just different from you or from the next person on the street, but that's okay. And so just kind of coming to it with a, a worldview that's more accepting of diversity and more accepting of the differences in the way people perceive the world and the way you interact with the world is just really good and just coming at it from a place of like self-compassion and self-love and really embracing that dynamic with mm -hmm. yourself first i think that really helped in terms of being comfortable with sharing this with a lot of people is just working on treating myself with compassion and love yeah well, I think because you had mentioned that earlier, right? Like it's, this has even helped you with that, that kind of self care and love. And, um, I love this connection you just made about differences is it's just a, it's just a really a piece of diversity for each of us. And that's actually literally what we talk about a lot of my organization really is just like, everything's diverse and it should be inclusive no matter what those things are. Yeah. But I, I love what the therapist was talking about, which is just, you need to see you as that. Like, yeah. it's just, it's, it's just a different version, that's all. Yeah, so don't see things as like a deficit or like a disorder that you need to contend with, but rather a different way of experiencing the world. And so yeah. having it as kind of shifting that view, I think will really help me. Well, I'm, I'm curious about, especially now that, I mean, you've, you, I think we're diagnosed, um, I guess I watched your first videos, but I don't remember the dates and stuff, you, but you received your diagnosis a while ago. Yeah. So, so you've been living with this knowledge and awareness for quite a long time. And now, like, I mean, this is, I'm paraphrasing, but so you created this journey that you, you know, you had these different careers, you've started this YouTube channel. Um, I'm, I'm curious as you started to really like have the self acceptance and really under a better understanding of your diagnosis and all the things that make you who you are. Do you th do you feel like being different has helped you either maybe discover or pursue a, a a unique purpose in your life? Yeah, I think so. Um, like I've done a lot of self reflection around my illness and around the benefits that it's provided me, and I think that it's just given me a lot more empathy in general and just compassion for other people and so I think that really led me to pursue a career in social work from the get-go so that was kind of a driving factor in creating purpose in my life um, and I think just yeah it's it's just driven this compassion and want to help others go through similar experiences or their own experiences or whatnot or difficulties or challenges and so um, yeah I think just it's built a lot of empathy with me going through these circumstances and challenges in my life around schizoaffective disorder. Was it obvious during those moments though? This is a question that I get often from people. I think the people that are looking for a little bit of purpose or meaning in life, you know, and I, I, and the things that I'm always kind of talking about with folks are, you really need to look inside about the things that make you so different and what make what, what your connected to what you're passionate about what your values and ethics are connected to because those are the things that relate to what to what you should be focused on in life yeah and i think a lot of people though are looking for the blueprint you know like well i'm just looking for the checklist christopher like um was it so plain for you or was it just like 
I guess what I'm asking is, you know, you're, you're having these experiences that help you form empathy. Did that just help you maybe discover or look for things that could utilize that? Because it, it's not like it was instantly like, you should be in social work. I'm just curious, like, did it take you a little while to maybe understand that that's what those gifts were for you and how to apply them? Yeah, I mean, I think that's part of the beauty of life is figuring out that checklist for yourself, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, it took a while to kind of embrace my challenges as a strength and to embrace, um, you know, difficulties that I had to overcome as a strength and something that I could um, share with others and that could help give me purpose in life and whatnot. So, yeah, it was definitely a growing... Okay. Um, yeah. And that's what I assumed. I just... I hear so many people that, that feel like they are lost and don't have that answer. Like they're expecting the answer to show up in the mail, but you know, but it's, it's not there. So I have, I have one last question that I, I've been really curious about. Um, with, I'm wondering with sharing the information and sharing experiences and going back to the purpose of what you originally talked about, you wanted to um, help spread this knowledge, you know, and empathy why you like why you why why you should do this versus let somebody else be so vulnerable and open in 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 that space i think it's up to everyone to kind of put themselves out there and to be vulnerable with other people and to just kind of try to create as much connection as possible so um i stepped into the role and i was glad to do so but i would gladly step aside to let others do so as well because I think that's really important is to get a lot of different viewpoints and a lot of different people's perspective and to just try to create as much empathy and compassion for each other as possible so I mean yeah you're right like why why me because there are so many people with such valuable experiences to share and I just would encourage everyone to try to be vulnerable in your own life and be vulnerable with people who you come across and just to try to create that connection as possible you know i when you said it why me i almost i instantly thought well why not you though like because it goes back to your point when you said everybody should be why not everybody do it you know and yeah I think, so it's not me and why not you and why not the next person we should yeah. all be striving for that yeah yeah exactly well this has been terrific i appreciate you coming on instagram live and sharing all this this is i, I mean like I said, I've had questions for like a couple months that I've been waiting to ask you. So this is, I really appreciate you coming on. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Sure. So before we wrap up, um, so if you want to learn more about um, living well with schizophrenia, just go to YouTube, you can search it. Um, I know you're in multiple places. Obviously you can link here on Instagram and there'll be a link in my bio as well to it. If you want to watch this episode again, or if you missed part of it, or if you want to watch past episodes, just go to accidentalinformation.com and they're all there. So, Lauren, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. We'll talk soon. Bye. Bye.